Okay, Carolina. We might be live now, I'm not quite sure. Let me just... I think we are, Richard. <laughs> Let's turn that one off there. Hello, and um, welcome to another Creative Network. Um, my name's Richard, and I work here at The Engine Room, which is home to Somerset Film. Uh, I'm at The Engine Room right now. We're based in Bridgewater, um, in the Sedgemoor area of Somerset. And um, I work on a project called Ignite Somerset. And what that allows me to do is work with artists in the county, um, working in all kinds of different uh, media. And uh, so I work with sculptors, painters, choreographers, musicians, all sorts of people. Um, and every month we get to do the Creative Network, which is an online conversation between myself and an artist. And uh, for this Creative Network, uh, it's going to be our second meeting with Carolina. Carolina is our current artist in residence on the Ignite Somerset project. Um, and you're joining us uh, today from your field of flax. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Hello everyone. So, hi, hi there. So, so, you've got, so you've got me coming to you from the engine room and Carolina from, from a field somewhere in, in Somerset. Um, and uh, the the field, of course, is if you if you watched the previous um, creative network, uh, you, you'll understand that the field of flax is significant to um, the artist's practice and to uh, the artist in residence project that we're we're working on um, at the moment. So um, so uh, apologies if the um, image breaks up or if the sound goes a little bit glitchy, we are relying on uh, Carolina's 4G signal from her phone, <laughs> but so far it's looking okay. Um, so first of all, just, just tell us how you're doing, Carolina. I'm good, thank you. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't be better. I'm sitting just next to my flax. I'm a bit conscious to turn my laptop over. I might lose you, but I give it a try. Okay. Um, one second, the table's a bit unstable too, so. Okay. Oh, great, yeah, okay. So we're, we're getting a shot. When I first met you, um, was it a couple of months ago? Um, uh, yeah. yeah, the flax was ooh, so big. Um, yeah. it, it's dramatic. Look, yeah. 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 Looked like a Japanese moss garden, didn't it? Like yes. little cushions. And there's all those very beautiful flowers, of course. Um, are on yes. the as well at the moment. Yes, it's in full bloom at the moment. I mean, this might appear quite late for people who know how to grow flax. Um, and I have to confess, I saw it quite late in the year, but you know, it's an experiment. It's my first time I'm growing flax and my first time I'm kind of wishing to produce um, textile fibers from it. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's an experiment and a learning curve. And I definitely wish to continue with that and, mm -hmm. you know, it has up and downs, but I will expand on this a bit further, a bit later in the talk. Um, I thought it might be nice to um, to show a short video I took this morning on my way to the flax field, just so you know where I'm located. Okay, um, that'd be great. Um, okay. Um, I might just share my screen with you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we're picking that up. Does this work? Yeah, we're picking that up. Okay. So it's it's literally located somewhere in Somerset. I think we don't want to reveal where exactly it is, but. <laughs> um, yeah, we're picking up the images. It's a little bit sort of like a frame every second, but actually that's quite interesting. We're not seeing a smooth video, but but um, it, we're, doing, we're getting a pretty good idea of your location here. It looks very discreet. Um, <laughs> there's an intriguing <laughs> You're somewhere down the pathway, I think, aren't you? 
Yeah, it's it's a jungle. And this area where I'm which I'm reaching now, this is where the pigs were like a few months ago. And now okay. that they get the wilderness is coming back and nettles inhabiting this place now. Okay. Uh, growing wild. There are nettles that are twice the size as me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fantastic. I mean, actually, you know, what what's quite um charming about this little video here is that um we know that we're 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 watching this from the field where there's no electricity, no Wi-Fi. We're just relying on your your data signal. No running water, by the way. <laughs> okay. So I've been quite lucky with the well, quite lucky and not so lucky with the rain over the past few weeks. So 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 I'd say. Of course we've had very, very heavy rain, right? So um so over the four week period of the last creative network, um, has the flax feel, it, it, is it, has it transformed in a way that's really quite dramatic to you? you? You said, you know, this is the first time working with flax. Is, did you imagine that it would be as tall as it actually is at the moment? Um, so this is the current situation. Um, this is, I will stop sharing my screen now. Um, I just want to show you a few images, just to, sh um, you know, especially for those who um, who couldn't join the first creative network. Okay. Um, to just give you a short um, overview of what we've been talking about and how the flux field developed. Okay. Basically. Okay. Um, so this was the original site before we started cultivating it. Um, as you can see, it's midst, midst the wilderness, like bramble everywhere. And so I literally, you know, just worked with this, this size that was already cut out of the brambles. Nice. Um, and before working the land, I, I harvested everything the land could offer. I harvested the moss, the nettles, brambles, Ooh, the sound sorry Caroline. to make dyes from um and literally just you know accept gratefully accept everything this piece of land offers to me um so this you know you see the, the transformation already um yeah the sorry carolina the the sound is really really breaking up um <laughs> to the point where there's big long gaps of silence um we can see your screen is it better now? yeah carry on and we'll see how we get on we can see your your better screen now yeah we can see the screen share as well okay i will i will try it again um okay. So, um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, if it's really going bad, just tell me, Richard, and we, we have a solution. Um, and as you can see, um, I've got four different patches um, yeah. where I applied four different ways of sowing the seeds and using uh, different organic fertilizers. One patch actually wasn't fertilized at all. Um, and I was quite curious to see, you know, how this results in in the quality of the fiber um so the patch is approximately 30 square meters just to give you a kind of dimension um this was two weeks after sowing the seeds um and this was in the in the top left patch where um i've, I've sowed the seeds in in rows um with like 10 centimeters gaps in between um this is another um another patch where i've been going a bit wild with sowing the seeds like i really enjoyed at this stage but then later it turned out not to be so ideal but as i already mentioned it's a learning curve and um yeah something i probably won't do next season um so this is um the patch that came along quite nicely, the one that I sold in rows. And this was like three, three and a half weeks after sowing. So 
Um, and this was probably my favorite um, stage because it literally looked like a Japanese moss garden. Um, and I couldn't stop photographing and documenting every, you know, every single light condition. Um, yeah, so this is um, just a few weeks ago before um, the flag started to flower. So it had already reached a quite um, good height. Nice. Approximately, you know, flax grows into, depending on the seed and the variety, obviously, but um, fiber flax grows between 80 to 120 centimeters until it's ready to be harvested. Mm -hmm. um, and this was already 80 centimeters um, approximately, and some bits it was high and some it was shorter. Okay. Um, but this is where the problem really started because, um, as I said, I saw the seed quite um, late in the season. I, I think, no, I know on the 13th and on the 16th of June. So this is really, really late. Um, you would, so then I was lucky because we had long periods of rain when I, after I saw the seeds, which many water out here. Um, and we had a really hot piece. So in this sense, I was quite lucky. But once the flax reached this height, it kind of started to collapse, like in some areas. And this was, you know, obviously due to the rain, due to really, really strong rainfall, strong winds as well. Um, and just because, yeah, it kind of shot up like super fast and then it kind of reached a certain height and then probably didn't have the strength. Um, so the soil conditions are not ideal as well um, because it's quite clay. So, <clears throat> um, and flax like some more loose and uh, can, where water doesn't just sit and gets heavy. Um, but like I said, it's an experiment and, and really interesting to appreciate all these kind of aspects that play with, you know, with the final outcome. Um, here is the first flower. Um, very excited about that. This was actually like 10, well, a bit longer than a week ago. So now the, the flax is um, in full flower. I can already see some seed capsules in green. So they will turn it turn into a golden brown over the next over the next two or three weeks um, and then it will be ready to be harvested. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, so this for now, I will save the red. Okay, yeah, the, the, um, the, the sound quality, unfortunately, was the was, wasn't the best. Um, I, I think we got the general idea, though. Um, and um, you know the the pictures were coming through just fine as well, and it was yeah I was quite as excited for you actually when when you talked about the first flower, <laughs> so uh, we we just about picked that up I think. Um, so um, tell us something about uh, that. It's it's quite clear from your images that this is a long process. Um, and you know, it's it's a process that's connected to the seasons. It's um, a cyclical process. Um, tell us how you reconcile that with your artistic practice. It's not like you can, you know, get get you know grab a canvas from the shelf and start painting immediately. You know, it's a process of working with the seasons. How how do you manage that? Um, you know, what is so wonderful about this project is that I'm always busy you know there is always something to do in in, in spring yeah. the, the preparing of the ground started then the sowing of the seeds maintaining of the field there is always something to do and nature and this piece of land offers things and materials to work with on a day-to-day -day basis you know at the moment like I said the flax is in full flower but also the surrounding brambles start carrying really uh, rich fruits so I, I, I get to to harvest all the berries which I can then transform into thighs or or simply enjoy eating um, so you know it's the cyclical nature of the work that is really fascinating because once the, the flax is harvested it will go on into the the next processes and um, next phases and I actually got a slide which I might uh, wish to show you um, 
Um, going back to my yeah. So um, here you can see it's it's because until I get to the to the processed fiber and to the processed uh, or to kind of use the, the fiber and the thread for my weaving, yeah. this will probably be a year's a year cycle, you know, and then the whole thing starts all over again. It's time to prepare the ground, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yes. like I said, um, I've been going through. Um, I'm, I'm basically here. Um, so <laughs> nearly time to pull the flax, um, and um, then these processes start. I probably Stupid. won't Rip. go into much detail now. Um, but you know, all these. Um, individual processes are so interesting and involve so much skill mm -hmm. and knowledge and experience. And unfortunately, so much of this knowledge has been forgotten or just neglected or pushed away by, you know, um, machinery processes um, or more industrial uh, approaches. Um, but, you know, just to say, I, I've, I've, I've recently uh, took part in a flax processing workshop, which was organized by Flaxland UK in Stroud in Gloucestershire. Um, and it was so fascinating, like the people who took part in this workshop, they came from all different backgrounds. You know, one was a writer, for instance, and, and she writes a book about um, the flax industry of the 17th century. And, you know, just to get some some kind of idea what it was like to process flax. She attended the workshop to kind of, you know, literally feel it in her fingers, which is incredible. Um, and for me, it was interesting to see how this can be worked on a larger scale. Like, you know, they have a few acres where they grow flax every single year and offer workshops and um, provide flax and processed uh, linen fibers to, to artists and makers and, all sorts of manufacturers um, and yeah we had a few interesting conversations um, um, also about the seed variety because I was quite interested which seeds they are using um, and for instance w w with my seed variety um, this my, my seed variety comes from the Netherlands so it's imported um, and it is actually known for really long fibers like really long stems which is which is actually a good thing for for linen fibers you know but the problem or the issue is um that it's growing so tall that you know especially in the uk with these weather conditions um and, and loads of rain and loads of wind it it kind of can't withstand the elements you know it then just collapse and so um now with with brexit and um yeah there, there is kind of a list of seeds that get imported or that you know are meant to be imported to the UK and it's only a, a you know a limited list so the the variety I am using is no longer on this list um, okay. so it's quite interesting because you know why why is this maybe because there have been a few miss harvests and you know not so mm. such a good result but then that comes in again this thinking of doing it on a small scale when you can actually live with a bit of you know miss harvest and or would you need a hundred percent outcome um or hundred percent results um so really fascinating thinking about colonialism and 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 kind of importing seeds from different countries and nations and yeah i guess another topic to expand on uh, yeah, on, in, on, on another day yeah um, <laughs> that's interesting that, that combination of extreme weather conditions and European politics <laughs> have an impact on your practice. Just looking at your um, graphic here, are you aware of where some of these processes get their names? Stooking, rippling and retting, they're really interesting names. Do you know the, the background to those words? Um, so um, retting, for instance, retting is the process that will come here very, very soon. Um, this is once you've pulled the flax out, the roots um you let it dry which is stooking so you try the flax bundles which i'm sure you have seen some images yeah. um and then comes the rippling where you de-seed the flax where um you know you can use the, the um the seeds for yeah. um but but then with retting um so retting um 
you know, there is a connection between retting and rotting, um, but actually there is a bit of a miscommunication here because, you know, you don't really want the flux to rot. You, you know, this is also something that only experience can bring. Like you have to feel it, you have to see it when the flux is right, you know, when it is in the perfect condition to be further processed and to go to the breaking, breaking um, stage. Um, but retting has its origins in, in the rotting, but it's actually, you know, it's quite interesting. It's actually not what you want. You don't want the, the flax to rot. Um, um, That's where it derives, yeah. Yeah. So are you aware of other projects that work with flax or, or other projects that combine arts activity with community gardening? Um, yeah, like I, like I said, the, um, the Flaxland UK in Stroud, they are really, really fascinating place. And, um, and I will also return um, in October to learn a bit more about spinning, because we actually did a bit of spinning um, with a drop spindle, but um, I wish to gain some more experience before it comes to this stage in my own project. Um, but there are a few, you know, especially in the southwest, there are a few um, projects that actually grow flax. Um, and um, but also in, in the east, um, for instance, in London, there are two projects I'm aware of. Um, there is, for instance, Hackney Herbal. Um, so they are kind of educating and kind of, you know, heightening awareness of how to use herbals and how to work with plants, how to make your own medicine. Um, and another one is in Bethnal Green, also in London. Um, a good friend of mine, she introduced me to um, the garden just a few weeks ago. And it's uh, actually a medical garden. It's called Phytology. Um, and they also run workshops and um, even have artists to come and work with them. Um, and it's incredible because it's just on the back side of uh, school so you know school classes come in regularly and even the community that lives in this area they come and you know this is some sort of a little green island in the cities and I think this is something that should you know be more and more and more especially in urban spaces mm -hmm. to have these community gardens to reconnect with nature and to learn about plants and herbs well plants and herbs and so but like to learn about plants and, and how to use them, you know, not just to grow them because they are aesthetically beautiful, but how to use them, how to make medicine, how to cook with them, to learn and reconnect with the seasons, what is growing when and how can you use them for, let's say, make your own dyes to, to paint or to dye your clothing or, you know, all these kind of things are so important. Um, but I, you know, especially since COVID, there are a lot of community gardens um, kind of you know um yeah appearing and and kind of developing into bigger community projects which is brilliant and yeah and i really wish to continue with my flax here and wish to um in, you know include other people and, and and just share my knowledge i mean you know i'm also just at the initial stages and still so much to learn myself but this is how it should be, you know, learning from each other and um, learning by doing and getting your hands into the soil. Yeah, um, no, no, definitely. Just so you're aware, you're coming through quite quite loud and clear now. Um, when, when you share your video, um, we, we get a really good clear, clear signal. Um, uh, when you share your screen, it sort of glitches a little bit, but, but yeah. this is um, great. You, you, um, when we met a few days ago, um, at uh, the space where you work, somewhere in a field in Somerset, <laughs> you mm -hmm. um, you showed me um, some thread um, from the from the workshop that you'd attended uh, that you just talked about. You've got it here, and you <laughs> sent me um, and I like to jump. <laughs> this came to my mind because you 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 just talked about how um, you know what we want is for people to. Uh, not simply grow uh, crops for because they're beautiful, though that's a really good reason to to appreciate a garden, um, but for also to 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 understand, you know, the practical um, 
uses of, of, of that vegetation. And you said to me that the, this is the second strongest thread, natural thread. After, yeah. I can't remember what was the strongest thread. Uh, silk, silk, yeah. Silk, yeah, and I, that's absolutely fascinating to me that, that yeah. once bound together and, and, and woven in a particular way, you've got this incredibly strong um, structure. It's really interesting, yeah. beautiful thing. Yeah. Fascinating, you know, because when you see the, the plants grow on the field, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a beautiful plant to look at. Um, but to actually see what comes from this, you know, it's, it, it feels like hair um, and the color, the shades, the tones, it's just, it's just incredible. And like I said, it's, you know, it's the second strongest natural fiber um, after silk. Um, and it gets even stronger once it's wet. So this is also um, what I've already been talking about during the first creative network, um, why it was so much used in, in, in uh, rope making, you know, for ships and, and, and sailors and because it, it got even stronger once it got wet. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in the spinning process, which is quite interesting. Um, you know, I, I've used a drop spindle, um, which is actually quite difficult um, because other than keeping, you know, your fingers moving and the, the kind of threads um, feeding, um, you also have to work with gravity um, to keep the, the spindle going. Um, but in industry, for instance, like where they have big spinning machines, they actually do water spinning. So they, um, the kind of, um, the kind of fibers get soaked in water and then kind of spun by big machines, um, which makes them, makes them even stronger. Um, and even more uniform, you know, kind of what, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, really fascinating. Um, yeah. tell, me, um, tell me something about, we, we chatted earlier and you talked to me about some of the rituals and the folklore mm. um, associated with the growing of flax. I think you were referencing particularly um, folklore of Austria. Now mm. uh, here in Somerset, we have our own folklore that I'm not, I don't know whether you're aware of it or not. You may well be. Um, and it's uh, the tradition of wassailing. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with wassailing, um, what, what happens is that the, there's a ritual, a ceremony, and um, sometimes it involves firing uh, shot, <laughs> shotguns in the air and it involves hanging toast uh, from a tree and and there's all sorts of songs that are sung um, the toasting I think derives from the idea of toasting as as you would toast with a drink but it's been it's it's been kind of transformed over the years to to actually involve the hanging of toast in the tree um, and all of this is to ensure that there's a good harvest of fruit uh, on the apple trees the, the following year um, and I've attended a few wassails and they're quite raucous, party-like atmospheres. Uh, tell us something about the, the, these, uh, this folklore. Uh, I think you mentioned something about burning black candles or something. Mm. Yeah, which I might have needed over the past few weeks. Um, <laughs> but um, to give this a bit more context, it might be um, good to mention that um, where all this interest comes from um, is probably from the idea of weaving. Um, you know, like weaving is the kind of red thread throughout my practice. So um, I've been, you know, not the traditional weaving um, as such, but more the symbolic understanding of weaving. So in, in, in ancient mythology, weaving is often understood as the creation of reality. So, you know, with weaving you have, um, which is basically the, the two interlacing sets of thread, kind of, you know, under, you know, depending on the weave, but it's kind of the, the kind of interlacing of two sets of threads. Um, and you kind of create something, something physical out of something as simple as a, as a single thread. Um, yeah. And in ancient mythology, weaving is often referred to, um, to, like I said, the creation of reality. So it's that the crossing threads are the crossing of time and space. Oh. Um, 
which is quite interesting. And there are a few rituals, um, especially in uh, North African um, um, areas. There is a ritual or like a tradition where you, when you finish a piece of weaving, you would say, you would say the same blessings as when a newborn baby is born and you would cut the biblical cord. Um, so, you know, um, it's quite interesting, the creation of life connected to weaving and its ancient understanding and mythology. Um, I might just show you a few images. Um, Let this noisy thing in the air pass. It's okay. Um, one second. Nearly there. We're bearing with, with the text. 2019, I, I took part in an artist residence. Not good. Uh, yeah, what what we're getting is that thing where the, the sound breaks up and then suddenly you come in and you're all speeded up. <laughs> but we're, we're, oh, we're yeah. that's okay. I'm seeing your pictures and we'll just we'll just carry on. Okay. Um, so uh, in 2000, in Port Levin in Cornwall, and I did some site specific interventions as part of a few other projects, um, and. One was a, a weaving piece that I did with collected seaweed, um, which I then, you know, sent on its own journey and, and left on site. So this was, you know, just an on site or site specific intervention um, slash work, um, which again works with what is already there, you know, what does nature offer and what, what kind of materials can I find and work with. Yeah. Um, Whereas the second one um, was already my starting point uh, in my interest in knotting and, and knots. So I've been collaborating with uh, fishermen in Port Levin and I was really lucky to get to see his incredible and, and ancient books and all sorts of knots and just got me inspired and, and kind of knots started. Um, so yeah, this was this was kind of during my my second year of uh, doing my degree. Um, this was uh, an installation, a site-specific installation I did in a domestic space in Bath, also my second year. Um, where I also work with the technique of weaving and I used rolls of needle punched paper and through the needle punching, like kind of making loads and loads of holes in the, in the surface of the paper, the paper got more flexible and I was able to weave it almost like fabric. Um, and this uh, installation worked with the cycle of light. So it was installed in the evening and um, was then open for a few hours so the sun would set on this side of the house basically here and kind of working with the period of darkness and people were invited to come into this domestic space and light the way through the, the jungle <laughs> um, light the way through and they were you know crawling underneath the weave and exploring um, the site and the domestic um, space as much as the installation itself um, and there was, I, I did a performance midst this paper weave and um, I was playing on a violin and, you know, it was all, had all to do with, with some poetry I, I, okay. um, I, I developed a few years ago. Um, so it was like a narrative and it was all about the kind of um, exploring the, physically exploring the artwork and ideas around um, the infantile play by a theory by Carl Gustav Jung um, was, was one of my main inspirations for this piece. Um, this was a more experimental approach towards weaving and I've talked about this briefly or we talked about this briefly during the first Creative Network event. So this was um, a site specific piece um, like this cabin was turned into a camera obscura and I did a live uh, weaving inside the box um, and 
the kind of spiral or the weave kind of gradually evolved over time. Right. Um, and again, you know, duration and movement and repetition and rhythm was or were all part of this work. Um, yeah, but coming back to your, uh, you know, this is kind of, I think, where all this interest in ritual and kind of, you know, ritual has to do with repetition, ritual has to do with doing things over and over again um, in order not to be forgotten. Um, so with with this piece of work, like my Flux project, um, it, it spans, you know, over a period of four months, really, from June to September. Um, you know, the actual growing and harvesting and then the processing obviously is much longer. But if, if just looking at the moon phases and, you know, there are, there are, um, you know, there are certain, how to say this, should I say beliefs or sayings, um, like, or theories, you know, it's like, um, there are certain sayings, let's say, like this sayings that say, you know, um, for instance, um, harvest um, harvest your crops under a new moon and kind of store it for future months because the new moon always or is a symbol for you know new energy and um, new strength and to kind of uh, prepare for the future and prepare for future months. So if you would um, harvest your crops, let's say um, early September, you would kind of store it throughout the winter months. Um, so thinking about my flax, really, um, uh, where are we now? We are in August here. Um, so we literally just had the full moon last Sunday, um, and we're now in the third quarter until next Monday. Um, and this is a good time to, to harvest, uh, fruits and, um, fruit that is, um, that you consume immediately. So I think it will be a good time to harvest all these wonderful berries around my flax. You see, um, it's a continuous cycle. And then when it gets to harvest my flax, it will be the, between the 13th and 16th of September. So let's say the first quarter to the 13th of September, yes. which is according to the moon, not not ideal, but let's let's just, Hope for the best. And coming back to your um, question about the kendo. So, um, uh, oh yeah, this might be worth mentioning too. Um, so um, this was a, a piece, a performance piece I did um, developed last year. And it was a performance that um, went on for eight hours and it was a reading. Um, so continuous reading performance where I read a book um, titled um, 21st Century Occult Poetry by uh, Sarah Shin and Rebecca Thomas. And it works with without title, really. Um, it's, well, somehow titled spells. Um, because it's all about, like I said, the ritual, a rhythm, a kind of repeating words over and over again. And especially with, with spells, you know, they need to be repeated over and over again in order to be activated or kind of remembered um, and this was also working with the cycle of the light so I started the reading when the sun set in Bath at I think it was 9.04 p.m and then continued throughout the whole night without a break um, um, without artificial light just a candle and then the performance finished at 5 or seven or something like this <laughs> when the sun would work again and you know the, the soundscape outside the birds would start singing um yeah um yeah We're so getting a bit of a landscape uh, of the space you're in actually with with yeah. the, the odd natural sound of birds and an airplane that was hovering above yeah. you for quite a time yeah but um just to to answer you finally answer your question about the black candle so there is a or the was uh, well might still be um a kind of ritual in Austria in especially in mountainous areas um where where there are you know really heavy thunderstorms um kind of um you know kind of be protected against uh the weather 
the thunder and um, evil spirits. So lighting of black candles would have probably helped my flux. But yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, ne next year maybe um, when you're in that second cycle, you can make sure you've got access to some black candles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> tell us. So what? So what's you know what's quite interesting here is that it's that it's that process of the seasons and it's that long-term sort of commitment. And, and I suppose also responding to uh, what goes on in the field and, and you know, from, from week to week, it looks different and, and it surprises you as well. And you're the person that's kind of ten, tending the crop. Um, so tell us, how, tell us how your ideas for the forthcoming exhibition are shaping up. Bearing in mind that you know um, it's you know that it's a constantly evolving situation in the field, so we're 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 opening an exhibition on the 18th of September for um, Somerset Art Weeks um, Open Studios here at the Engine Room, and we'll have some kind of showcase of your work. But without going into too much detail, where, where are you at with this at the moment? Um, yeah. So, and you know here. Um, we might return to this um, original idea of, of, of this cyclical um, nature of work. You know, it's it's probably a year long project, which will continue every year, hopefully. Um, but with this residency, which lasts for three months, you know, it's kind of it's kind of picking one element because I wish to develop a whole series of, of works relating to the various stages within this process of growing and harvesting and processing um, so the residency kind of picks one element and kind of almost captures a moment in time you know um, and since you know the exhibition is coming up in four weeks so now is the time to actually realize the work and the th current situation is you know flux is in full bloom um, the, uh, the brambles around do carry uh, berries so you know there are a lot of insects and a lot of other animals and birds uh, attracted to to the site. And, you know, I wish to work with what the current state of the field is. So um, not to say too much, but um, I wish to document, um, I, again, I wish to work with the cycles of the light. I wish to work with periods of darkness and daylight. Um, and wish to collect um, or document um, the the insects and um, yeah the insects that are kind of inhabiting the space now, and you know it's it's quite impressive to look at the field now because the bramble is you know coming in again. It's of trying to you know to kind of go through the through the rows of flax and forming a, an organic weave um kind of wilderness is taking over again um so it's it's a quite extraordinary mixture of 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 plants here which all attract a huge number of insects so i wish to also work with with media and i think this is also what the residence is about you know to to be or to kind of move beyond your comfort zone a little and to kind of work with something you haven't worked much before. Um, so I wish to work with sound, um, interactivity, film and photography to kind of document um, the various species that inhabit the space. Um, and yeah, so um, yeah, we will install, um, we will install work at the engine room but there will also be an option for people to come here see whatever stage the field of flax will be in at this time um but i think you know what is so great about working with you and um somerset film is like you know i get to work with medium media like i said i haven't been working much in the past and this will allow me to continue working with these media um, and if I already think ahead, if I think about, you know, the processing um, stages of, of actually, you know, heckling the flax and, and kind of 
spinning it and and weaving it all these rhythms i can already hear them you know it's like yeah. it kind of opened my my ears a bit um and just appreciating this project with heightened senses um you know not just visually but also through my ears yeah. um yeah and yeah and yeah there will also be um yeah i will also bring in some um expertise from um, outside but i want so much <laughs> more well, that, i think one of the aims of the residency is that um it enables you to have some understanding of um the uh the creative potential of of digital technology and that's that goes beyond simply knowing how to operate some equipment or a process but you know using um using uh the technology sensitively and hopefully um you know after this residency and you continue on this cyclical uh work of of exploring flax then you'll be able to bring other elements of new technology in into into your practice as well so yeah, that, we, we can kind of wrap it up there we, we've done quite well with the technology um the sound wasn't the best but we did we we do know where you're at now with with this project and and with this process and we've learned quite a lot um uh so so thank you so much for doing this second creative network the third one is also going to feature you um and that's going to actually be um, from the exhibition itself. So we're, we're opening, the, opening the exhibition on Saturday, the 18th of September um, in the afternoon, two, two o'clock. Um, and uh, that will be an opportunity to, to meet you, um, for your audience to come and meet you, Carolina. And um, on the Wednesday, the 29th of September, that's our final creative network with you. Um, and I think there might be some performative thing uh, going on there um, at, at that network. And there might also be some kind of practical activity um, that connects in some way to the work that, 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 that's on show. So um, you can find out more information about that just by checking out um, Somers uh, somersetfilm.com and um, taking a look at the Get Involved page um, and, and, and seeing what's on the diary there. Um, is there anything else you want to add? <laughs> um, I look forward to meeting the audience in person. And yes, it will be wonderful if, if you know, there will be a live element. So um, there will, will be either a live performance or a kind of um, a kind of event where people can, act, can get involved um, and get their hands on to my flat. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. And thank you so much, Richard, for today's. It's a pleasure. Talk. I look forward to to meeting you with you for the next thing and, and exploring some new element of new technology. Me too. <laughs> thank you, Carolina. We'll, we'll we'll wrap it there, and I look forward to seeing.